Hello and thank you for your time. My name is Javor Stefanov and I work at Partasoft LTD. We specialize in developing products for broadcasters and cable TV providers. And today I'll be showing you a quick tutorial on how to stream and monitor using one of our DVB monitors. So after you've connected the device to the network with an Ethernet cable and then connected an RF antenna or cable TV source to the device, you just need to open an internet browser. Uh, I recommend Mozilla Firefox because for the moment only Firefox supports NPAPI plugins like VLC Player required for streaming channels. Uh, you enter the device's default IP address, here I'll display it to you now, and use the default username and password, which are both admin at the start, but you can change them to whatever you want after you first log on. Uh, once you've done that, then the embedded website should appear. Just remember that your computer should have an IP address which is in the same network. Uh, in this menu, the IP configuration menu, you've got your standard IP settings. Also the time and remote configuration. Here you can also configure the SNMP or the email address to which you will receive any alerts if an alarm was triggered during the monitoring session. Over here, we have the update tab where you can see the device's current firmware, the features it has, some which are purchasable add-ons for our devices, like the alarm profiles and the advanced MPEG monitoring. Uh, this is also where you can check for newer versions and updates to the device. It's always worthwhile to check because we constantly try to keep working on improving our devices to make them better and well suited to our clients' needs. Now, uh, before the device is able to stream or monitor anything, first it has to have some carriers installed in it. To do that, just go to the installation menu, select your modulation, then choose the starting and ending frequency and select start. The device will automatically search and install any carriers it finds. Now I'm not going to do this because it takes a while for the search. A faster alternative is in the quick search tab, but to use that you have to know the specific frequencies. Uh, I've already done a quick search. You can see the results of the search here, and I now have some frequencies installed on my device. So for streaming, you need to go to the DVB menu, go to configuration and select streaming. Then just select the modulation you wish to stream. These modulations depend on the model of the device. Wait for it to lock on and it's ready. You can also click on the little config button to see some relative settings like bandwidth, symbol rate, constellation, which is currently set to a 128 qualm constellation, and spectrum. Remember to always save and to any changes you've made. On the status tab, you can see the current RF parameters, for example, the SNR, MER, BER, and transport stream rate. Selecting MPEG will show you the MPEG tables containing various service information like PAT, PMT, SDT, EIT, NIT, TDT, and TOT. On the Stream tab, you have a list of all the broadcasted programs and their frequencies. Here you also select the Stream protocol. Uh, we have UDP, RTP, and RTSP. Also, you must select either single or multi-program transport streaming. For single, SPTC, you can select up to 5 services on the same frequency to be streamed. And for MPTC, just select the proper destination address for the IP stream. Uh, once you're done with that, you can just go to the video menu and as you can see, I'm already streaming a channel from the device to my VLC player. And I can change the channel like so. So, if you want to use the device for monitoring, you have to go back to the DVB menu and switch from streaming to monitoring. Doing this slightly changes the menu itself because as you can see, the video and streaming tab have been removed, but a new menu called charts has appeared. 
settings are made almost the same way as with streaming. To reach modulation, there is a setting button which allows you to configure relative settings like color, transmission, system and spectrum for analog TV, bandwidth, symbol rate, constellation and spectrum for cable TV and so on. You can add new frequencies by just clicking the add new button, uh, you type in the new carrier frequency and click add. You can also edit or delete a frequency if you want. The status tab is used to check on our parameters and carriers found. Now let's talk a bit about our alarms. The alarms tab only works when you're in monitoring mode. Alarm thresholds can be set in the RF alarms menu. Uh, these here are the service alarms. The DVB monitor automatically searches for audio or video PID and it triggers an alarm if data for the specified service is missing for more than 3 seconds. And here on the active alarms tab you have a list of all the currently activated alarms, if any. The advanced MPEG alarms here are only available if you have the advanced MPEG monitoring option on your device installed. These alarms use the TR101290 standard to constantly monitor the status of your transport stream's data. Now before I end this video, I just want to show you the charts menu right here because it's very helpful in general. It basically takes the information from all the log files and converts it into some very user-friendly charts which can be sorted by measurements. You can see the frequency's performance on different days in the log view. Yeah, you just need to select which modulation you want to view. Uh, it depends on the model. This one, the ACT, supports analog, cable and terrestrial. Choose a frequency, then select the parameters you want the charts to display, like SNR, MER, BER. My favorite view is here in the Programs tab, where you can see an advanced chart that shows the bitrate speed of all the services of the currently selected carrier and clicking on specific service will further show you video and audio PID bit rates for that service. This program tab, however, is a feature that is unlocked only if your device has the advanced MPEG monitoring option. You can see it here uh, in the update tab. You also have to go to the DVB log sum menu and tick the log advanced MPEG monitoring information. Save changes and the program tab will appear. Having the advanced MPEG monitoring option also provides advanced log files that can be accessed in the DVB monitoring menu by clicking on a carrier and then selecting the button More. This displays very detailed information for all PIDs and sections. Uh, overall, it's a very useful option to have. For more detailed information about it and all our other available options, I recommend you go to our website and download the option specification document. Uh, well, I guess that was most of the important stuff. Thank you for your time again and I hope this video was useful to you in some way. This is Javor Stefanov from Quartasoft signing off.